Welcome to Just Checking In. I am Debbie Ramirez and I'm so happy to be with you today. Um, my guest today is Dr. Arlene Hall and uh, she's a great friend of mine as well. She's a senior pastor, a lead pastor at Deliverance Temple Worship Center. And Arlene, uh, it's so good to, to see you today. Uh, you, you are such a blessing for our denomination. Um, it's good to see you uh, in our uh, Pentecostal Theological Seminary uh, board as well. Uh, you are such a gifted person. Thank you for being with us. Arlene, you have a tremendous uh, ministerial journey. Uh, could you, could you uh, share with us, uh, you know, how God had been placing you and uh, bringing you to this place in your life where you are serving uh, as a lead pastor in a local church? Thank you, Dr. Ramirez, for asking me to share in this moment. It's always great being with you. And as you serve as the liaison to PTS board, I have the opportunity to sit around the table and glean from your wisdom. And I thank you for that. So um, my husband and I planted um, Deliverance Temple Worship Center 23 years ago. And we, um, at that point, I had just graduated from, I graduated from MIP program, the Church of God MIP program, almost nine years prior to that, 1992. We planted DT in 1999. And I was preaching in our region, in our local church. I serve as a youth pastor for 10 years. And gradually the Lord, the Holy Spirit started to nudge us. And eventually he spoke clearly that he wanted us to plan to work. And so we, we with the blessing of our pastor, we did. And that has just been a journey here in Boston, Massachusetts and growing in the ministry and growing together. My husband served along with me. So we are a dually, what I call in my doctoral thesis, dually ordained pastors where we serve together. And it's just a tremendous blessing. It is amazing. It is an amazing story. And you know, more and more we have uh, couples that both of them uh, are in uh, ministry call you know, for, from, by God to serve in ministry and uh, to see both of you working together. Now, you are the lead pastor. Both of you are uh, ordained. How that works? I mean, uh, how do you make decisions as a couple now and uh, how you find those uh, collaboration points uh, so we can learn from, from you? So it was clear that the call of God was on my life. And when the Lord spoke to me through a dream to pastor, I told the Lord, you will need to speak to my husband. And literally, he gave him the same dream. At that time, my husband served administratively, but I was always preaching. And so I, I, I resisted. The, 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 the role of pastor for so many years and eventually we gave in. My husband endorsed, affirmed, and pushed me to stand my ground in the place where God has called me. He has always worked full time outside of the ministry. And six months after we planted DT, the Holy Spirit said full time. And so I gave up my, um, job for ministry and so for the past 23 plus years I've been serving full-time. Bishop being an ordained bishop with the Church of God, we, we share together, we process together, and I always say we complete each other, we do not compete. Bishop has strong gifts and we know what that is. And I have a different set of gifts. And so we complement each other. Um, he, he is a strong administrator and leader. And he knows how it is to manage. And that's his background in human resources and management and training. And so he does that side of the ministry mostly. 
and I do a lot of the preaching and teaching and together we collaborate in training. And so he has a profile where he oversees oversight in certain ministries. And I have certain areas where we share in oversight. We have never had in these 23 years had any conflict Wow. Um, by the grace of God, because Bishop have often said to others, he knows who he is and I know who I am. And we don't, we don't, we're not trying to compete. Yeah. Well, uh, and you, you, you have found a synergy, synergy with your uh, own synergy. Calls, That's talents. It. And uh, that we were talking about today. And so what a model, what a model you are establishing that you have established uh, for so many couples that uh, would like to fully participate uh, in, uh, in the local church uh, ministry. Uh, Arlene, yes. also I have discovered that uh, you intentionally have uh, pursued uh, education. You, you, you went to grow. Uh, you continu continually you have been looking for opportunities to keep growing uh, as a person in ministry. Uh, education, why, why a master degree program? Why a doctoral program uh, to pastor a local church? Uh, how education is adding value to your ministry today? That's a great question. I think um, at this stage in ministry, I appreciate more my academic pursuit. Over the years, um, when I graduated from MIP, that was seminary for me. <laughs> you, you learned so much and you thought, that was it. But very soon when I started pastoring, um, just the, 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 the need to understand the scriptures more, the need to contextualize ministry, to be able to communicate, to speak to the context that we are in here in Boston, to work and to collaborate with others. I realized that there was more. And one of my mentors here in Boston who at that time served as the president of the Black Ministerial Alliance, we were having a meeting and he looked at me and said, Arlene, for what God wants to do in and through you, you need to go back to seminary. And I said, well, I have all these children pastoring, that's challenging enough. And he said, you should. I'll write the recommendation and the rest was history. I enrolled in Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary here, and I started in the certificate level program. At first, I did a master's in urban theology, and then I continued and did my master's of divinity. And, you know, since the Greek and Hebrew did not do me in, <laughs> they, they helped me to understand more the word of God. It was just just learning how to um, be the best person God has called you to be. And then later on, I pursued my doctorate in ministry at the Pentecostal Theological Seminary. I graduated five years um, since my, my demon. Um, so it's, it's, it has certainly helped to shape my lens on scripture, not just preaching culture, not just preaching religion, but preaching the word, um, answering the question, what is the text saying? What did it say then? What it is saying now? And how do we apply that to the context that we are living in? And I think that is so important to our time. Amazing. And you have been preaching for many years now, uh, the, you know, pre-COVID, COVID, post-COVID post church. But um, now how, after studying and growing and you were preaching in Boston, uh, what, a, what a challenging city, how is how yes. your preaching been changing uh, lately? And uh, if how, it, it, the style of preaching, is, is that changing? And how uh, it looks like today? How, how do you communicate the gospel today? It, it has changed. It has changed in a lot of ways because you're not just preaching to the ones that are sitting before you. You're preaching to the world. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. And of course, now we're having folks and church in the North is different from the South. I traveled to Atlanta and Cleveland, Tennessee, and you wondered if COVID was there. 
because there is such huge crowd, folks are really back. There is still um, a sense of hesitancy here. Folks are not sure, things are still very fluid. And so it's a new normal. You're, you're preaching to those online, you're preaching to those in-house. And so you need to be able to communicate the word so that everyone can grasp and understand it. And so it's more work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's definitely um, a heavier responsibility than when it was pre-COVID. Sure, it's a hybrid uh, situation here. Um, of course, you need to perhaps uh, preach in, 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 in less time, you know, shorter your messages and use more uh, descriptive language. And of course, uh, everything that you had been studying, uh, I'm sure that has been helping you to do uh, that. Uh, Arlene, we need to uh, pray. And, uh, you know, most of our pastors, uh, not only in the United States and Canada, are uh, hearing you and, and seeing you, watching you, but uh, we have people from all around the globe. Could you pray particularly for our pastors and uh, their families today as they uh, recreate themselves, you know, looking for mm -hmm. more effective ways of communicating the gospel, communicating the gospel today to our society and pastor yeah. their churches with so many uh, difficult challenges that we're facing today. Could you pray, please? Sure, sure. Thank you, Lord. Father God, yes. we just thank you for this Kairos moment yes. that you've given to us to speak life into the life of pastors. Yes. Thank you for your calling on your sons and daughters, oh, yes, wherever God. they yes. are, wherever yes. they're logging on and yes. viewing this um, um, segment of let's check in. Yes. I pray for every man and every woman that you have called, that you will affirm them, that you will assure them and that you will anoint them for yes. the season. Assure them that you have called them for such a time as oh, this. Yes, in the name of Jesus, affirm them of your calling. Affirm yes. them of your uniqueness in ministry. And I pray that you will anoint them, Father God, oh, yes. with an anointing of divine suddenness. Mm. Holy Spirit of Hallelujah. God, Praise reach the Lord. and to reap the harvest yes. in the name of Jesus. I pray that they will stand on the power mm. of Scripture. I yes. pray that they will declare the mind of God. And mm. for those who may be heavy laden even now, mm. someone that may be feeling, oh God, the weight of the season I pray that you will lift every burden. And I thank you now that you, Lord Father, is ministering to them. I pray oh, for yes. even our general overseer, Dr. Tim Hill, yes. Dr. Ramirez, yes. and the executive committee, the yes. executive council. Mm. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you will mantle them oh, yes. 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 with an yeah. end time anointing. Hallelujah. Yes, Father God, to carry out the kingdom of agenda yes, that you have given yes. into them. Thank you that as you declare to your servant, mm. Abraham, mm. that you have gone ahead of them oh, yes. to prosper their journey. Let mm. your angels go ahead of them in mm. these next two years as they chart the course mm. and as they lead us, that you, Lord Father, will be glorified in everything we do. I praise you mm. now and I thank you for the lives that you're touching, the lives that you're transforming, Father God, and that something today will speak life Hallelujah. into the hearts of your yes. sons, into the hearts of your daughters, yes. for your glory yes. and for your mm. honor. In Amen. the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. What a powerful, Amen. powerful anointed prayer. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Hall. And uh, I am so glad that we were able to talk for a little moment here. And um, I, uh, I invite all of our audience to uh, come back for our just uh, checking in uh, in our next episode. God bless you. Thank you, Arlene, for being with us today.